Well, you talked about the original trilogy and, and it's like people responded to those movies with such fandom and excitement because they liked the movies. Mm -hmm. And now that's inverted. Now they're responding it's to- It's more about the brand. The brand and before the movie comes out, like like those, those Star Wars like fan conventions, what are they called? Fan, Disney Cons? Expo. Star Wars oh, Celebration. The Star Wars Celebration where they're like, here's the trailer and it's like, like a, like a, an auditorium of like fifty thousand people, and they're all like cheering, and and you know they have people up there, and it's like it's like a political rally, uh, and and you know Kathleen Kennedy's like pounding her fists on a podium, <laughs> and, you know everyone's like you know holding up signs, so so you have this like this like weird flock mentality, sheep mentality of of people that are just like blind fans to this. It's almost like a, a cult now. And then the movie comes out and everybody hates it. <laughs> and then they say, here's another one for you. And everyone fills up that auditorium again <laughs> and starts like, cheering. It's like grown-ups acting like children. Like children cheer <laughs> for movie trailers. Children cheer. Yeah. I cried the whole time. Like, uh, well, like, or you wait till the movie comes out, you watch it, either you like it or you don't. And then you move on with your life. We're, we're, we do like post-mortem, you know? We, we look at <laughs> all the things in it, what went wrong, what went right, you know? We tend to break things down, but then, but like you said, it's very black or white with, with some of the people out there where they're just like, fuck you, you know? Yeah. And, and it's strange. I think to me the strangest part is people just like screaming their heads off. Uh, it's like Beatlemania. <laughs> make another Beatles reference. It's like the girls screaming on the Ed Sullivan show for something, except it's grown men and women. <laughs> men, mostly. M mostly men. <laughs> Wearing like poor costumes, they're in their 40s, and they're, 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 they're like pulling their hair out and screaming. And it's almost like conditioned like a political rally. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what I mean, where it's like our political candidate can do no wrong. They're perfect in every way. Look at our political candidate. You know, it's, it's, it's the, even those behind the scenes things on like The Force Awakens or, or the Rogue One Blu-ray, have you ever watched any of those? No. The They're very one. calculated. They're so glossy and, and everybody got along great on set and this is such a beautiful experience and, and our political candidate can do no wrong. Contrast that with the, the Phantom Menace uh, behind the scenes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If I forget to say action or cut, just step in and say action and cut. I manage action and cut and faster and more intense. And then uh, most I sit there looking miserable and quiet. It makes you even look back on the original trilogy and even the prequel trilogy to a certain extent and appreciate like the, the realness of it. Now it feels like there's a gloss over everything and, and you can't really see what's behind the glass. Welcome to Disney. The way I approached how we would go about making episode seven wasn't any different than what we would do with any large tentpole movie today. There, there was a period, a very brief period of time, when Star Wars was just a series of, of well-liked blockbusters. Mm -hmm. And now it's not special anymore. 